All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at how you would go about finding the derivative using the limit process. All right, this would be at the very, very beginning of when you started your derivative work in Calc 1, um, especially right after they gave you the formal limit definition for a derivative. All right, now to be able to do that, you've got to remember what your difference quotient is. So I'm going to be using f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. All right, so this is my original function. I am taking the derivative, so I'm going to start out with that notation. So f prime of x, all right, tells whoever's looking at my work that, hey, I'm getting ready to take the derivative. Okay, now I'm going to use the limit process. So I'm going to have a limit here, the limit as delta x approaches zero. All right, and then I've got to implement the difference quotient on this function. So in other words, I'm going to take x plus delta x and plug it into the function. So I will have the square root of an x plus a delta x, all right, minus the function itself, which is minus the square root of x, and then all of that all over delta x. Okay, I am going to go ahead and keep that in a set of square brackets. All right, now at this point, you've just um, a, lot of, a lot of algebra based here. You've got to remember or recognize the fact that if I'm going to take this limit, I need to rationalize that numerator. All right, so we'll write down here, rationalize numerator. Okay, which means I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. So I'm going to have the square root of an x plus delta x, and then plus the square root of x all over radical x plus delta x plus radical x. So that's what I'm doing right there. I'm rationalizing the numerator. Okay, now when I go to my next step, I'm just simply going to be simplifying here. I still have my limit notation out in front, so the limit of delta x approaches zero. All right, so when I multiply this binomial times this binomial, the whole point of using that conjugate is so that you recognize that this is the factored form of the difference of two squares. So I'm going to square my first term, which will result in an x plus a delta x. All right, I'll put a minus sign there because these two things, when multiplied together, will give me the difference of two squares. I will square the second term, which will give me an x. All right, now, when I multiply here on the bottom, I am not going to get in a hurry. I'm just going to leave it as a delta x times that square root of x plus delta x plus the square root of x. All right, I would venture to say that's probably the number one mistake or easiest mistake is people want to distribute there in the bottom right away. And you just need to hold off because things are going to cross out really nicely. All right, so x minus x is clearly going to go away there on the top. All right, that's going to leave a delta x and a delta x because it's already factored out cross out there. Okay, so this delta x and this delta x is going to go away. I'll have that imaginary one there in the numerator. Okay, so then we'll have the limit as delta x approaches zero. I'm going to write the simplified version here of this one over a square root of an x plus delta x plus the square root of an x. Okay, so I have algebraically simplified that limit as much as I possibly can. So now I'm ready for a direct substitution. I'm going to take my limit notation away because at this point I'm actually taking the limit. I'm going to replace that delta x with zero. So this term will become zero. So I will have um, one over the square root of an x, because I replaced zero, plugged it in, plus square root of x. All right, and then that's going to simplify down to one over two square root of x. All right, so yes, um, long process when you take the derivative using that limit process, all right? But most college level Calc 1 classes want you to know how to use that limit process, understand that formal limit definition of a derivative, all right, and be able to work it out like this. Clearly, the farther you go into Calc 1, then you will no longer use this limit process and you'll go about using all those shortcut rules like the power rule, product rule, quotient rule, that sort of thing, all right? But just at the very beginning of a Calc 1, class, it is important to understand where and how you can derive a derivative using that limit process. So definitely, thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, please share with your friends so they can benefit too. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.